maximum. Maintenant, on va vous présenter l'original Nick Manassé. Faites un maximum de bruit et d'applaudissements pour Nick Manassé qui vient maintenant take over sur le set de l'original IB Sound System. Nick, time is yours now. Bless up. Very happy yes. today yeah. to be with Mr. Manessa for this is a special interview for Ness Radio and Musical Echoes. Welcome Thank to you. Paris. Thank you. Thank you, you were just uh, in Belgium yesterday. I was just in Belgium at the Irie Vibes Festival in Quartermark, Belgium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic festival. It's really great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really yeah. Per the perfect small festival. Yeah, okay. yeah. And really perfect. And now it's High Bass that yes. is inviting you. Yeah. And I think that four years ago they invited you already. Yes, okay. I was in, I think it was the beginning 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, I was with High Bass uh, and the great Jamaican trombone player Vin Gordon uh, in, the, in the basement of the Architectural College. Nice. In the south, in south south side of the river in Paris in maybe in um, what's it called uh, Rosh Hashanah something okay yeah you know okay great um, yeah yeah and you've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of things uh, in France you've been uh, releasing records yes. on French labels right I have yes that's true um, yeah I mean for a long time for a long time in, in the past yeah um, Hammer Bass right with Hammer Bass records even in maybe 2003, 2004, we, we, we put out Doppler Style Volume 1, um, which had um, one big tune on it called Skenga, which I know, and I do not know the artist, but I know that one hip hop artist sampled Skenga and made a big French hit, hip hop hit. It goes ding 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 all the way through. All right. Yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is, is that I take a sample from a Jamaican record, and 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 the, on the Jamaican record it's called uh, "Swarmy" by Anthony B, and the rhythm is by Jazwa. And on the Jamaican record, the sample goes like that. And I took the sample okay. and I slowed it down. And it goes, ah, oh, it goes, ding, 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 ding. So my sample, I know, is the original. <laughs> and, and the Jamaican guys, they speed up, speed up. Uh -huh. But I know that the original sample, and the funny thing is that somebody called me from France and say, what is the sample? And they asked Jazwad, the rhythm maker for the original, yeah. and he said, I don't know what it is. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know what the sample is. Well, But talking, of, yeah, talking funny, about yeah. samples, but yeah. also you're a musician, right? Yeah. You play melodica. I play everything. Yeah. You play bass. Yeah. Guitar. Yeah. Keyboards. Yes. Drums. Not kit drums, but I'm good on the percussion. On percussion. Yeah. I cannot do the four. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, on uh, on uh, you have no boundaries concerning production. You can do a track, everything. From, yeah. From from scratch. From yeah. The, but I. I say that I play to make to make music. I don't play as a virtuoso. You know, oh, I play okay. I play what I need to play, mm -hmm. and um, so very often I, I have guitarists coming down to play lead guitar. Of course, but I like my I like my reggae chip, mm -hmm. um, and and I'm good on the pick guitar. But if it's like a big proper solo. I want to. I want to have one of my guitar players to come play. For sure. Um, drummers, I you know, often I have drummers coming down all the time, um, and um, yeah, anything special, and obviously brass. Okay. Yeah, or horns. I, Fantastic. I, yeah. Let's talk about the studio, the yard, right? Yeah. Where Where is that studio based? My studio is in Labrook Grove in West London, um, and it's. Uh, 
in a funny little corner of a very expensive area. It's just on the edge of Kensington and Chelsea. And Kensington and Chelsea, as a département, has more money than Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland all together. This one part of London. But in my little bit, it's all, you know, places which break cars and and also there is gypsies or travelers living there and this is a great thing for us because the travelers every london borough or, or like a uh, arrondissement they must have one place for travelers mm. so in kensington and chelsea it's not so easy to find a different place for travelers so it means we have this little anarchist place where my studio is that's very special yeah. i wish uh, it's an amazing place we will come to your yeah, studio yeah, yeah, with yeah. musical it's echoes really and cool. radio yeah. for sure yeah. uh, now i want to i want to ask you something can we rewind yeah. and can you tell me the first the first time you got connected with the jamaicans do you remember something specific that brought you yeah i do that brought you to the sound system culture i think maybe two three four things happened all at the same time um my older sister who is six years older than me and she was very cool she still is very cool and she had a little kind of subconscious thing you know she had some reggae albums but proper ones she had um she had you know she had a 12 inch by the royal rasses i still have that 12 inch san salvador it's a classic wow. she has this 12 inch on see-through vinyl and there was that she she went to see prince farai in a very famous london venue it's just called the venue it was richard branson and it was in victoria and it was kind of the original model for the modern london geek venue for a thousand people to that maybe 1500 so she had a little awareness of reggae at the same time was the summer of 79 so the summer of 79 was a big thing because two significant records came out madness by madness and on the other side the prince and even more gangsters by the specials okay at the same time there was the Virgin Frontline album with the fist yes. and the blood. Yes. And at the same time, I became aware of uh, the Bob Marley live album. And my sister, my other sister, buy, she buys me Kaya for my 13th birthday. I wanted Exodus, but Kaya was on discount. <laughs> so, she buy me, so she bought me Kaya. Um, and um, so all those things suddenly came and then very quickly within like one, one and a half years, by the time I was 15, I was like, okay, this is it. You know, I am this, you know, and um, brilliant. Yeah. And I think, you know, this really lasted until I was about 25. And then a friend, one friend said to me, Gil from Tough Scout, he said to me, Listen, you need to get some Stevie Wonder albums, you need to get some Jimi Hendrix, uh, and you, oh. need, you need to kind of wide, open, your, open, open, your. open a little bit. Okay, <laughs> you know? okay. But yeah, so, um, yeah, it's right kind of around that time, I would say between 12, 13, you okay. know, that was the time. And then you got invited on a major, on major sound systems, a Jamaican. Yeah. Yeah, 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 we, d we did. Well, we, we, we were invited to clash with Okay. To, to do sound clash with um, so the way it goes is by the time so we're talking yeah the time of the summer of 1985 we finish our sound system bang 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 finish the sound system take it to carnival go and play at notting hill carnival um, that day the glue is still wet <laughs> on the speakers and um, so then within less than two years we are asked by a friend of Shaka to play with Shaka 
wow. in Hackney in 87 and it was a, just a great, great dance and we did okay, you know, we did well. There was, I All remember right. playing one tune and we got a big kind of, Oi! Oi! we got a big, fo a big, fo big forward from the crowd and Joe from Abishanti, he still says that we kick Shaka's ass. <laughs> I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true. I think Shaka kicks our ass. But, <laughs> but, but the thing is that we, we get somewhere and then, and then on the other side of London, in West London, another dread said, okay, we want to do part two, come play Shaka again. And then there's a funny story because on the second time we played Shaka, Shaka had the test pressing of this album. He had a white label, right? This album. This album. That's where I'm bringing you yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he had a white label. Okay. Shaka didn't know that it was my music, our music, right? And so we're playing, we're warming up, and then and then so the crowd is there, and then so the first Shaka's big play, he plays two tracks from this album, consecutive, consecutive, and the crowd just goes, Way! you know, the crowd is going mad. And, um, Which and you remember? The yeah, I do. Yeah, nice. yeah. C CTUFB yes. and Satellite. Yeah, CTUFB and Satellite. Okay. He, he played, nice. and nice. and the crowd is going bananas. <laughs> and um, and then I'm just a big smile, going, "You don't know this is <laughs> our music." So for some reason, I had with me. A, a red Shaka 12 inch called Ja Children Cry by Sister Audrey and that was Shaka's first release and I know that. So when it was my turn to play, I played Ja Children Cry. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And then I saw Shaka looked at me, you know, had a little moment. And you know, ever since then, you know, I mean I don't see Shaka very often but but Type. A, so you know, perfect we're, we're, because we're we bought this yeah. record because uh, you know we wanted to ask you some yeah. some information about this uh, sound So this is this is a re the re re reissue from what 2008 something. 2010, I see. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and now it comes again. Yeah. Third? No, no, another reissue yeah. now. Really? Yeah, another one. Three times. Three times. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So you did that. Uh, there was three album, right? Or two album? There was. No, just yeah, one one dub album and then an album with an artist called Tenna Stillin. Okay. Which was like the vocal versions. Very nice. Yeah, and these yeah, these are being reissued now separately. This one is a, a little bit different. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's a good thing that we yeah. brought this record. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. can have the story. Le pouvoir de ce système est incontestable L'ampleur des vagues est considérable Bien qu'il fait l'ambiance, elle est formidable Parmi toutes, c'est la plus agréable La puissance du son et des lyrics imparables Parce que redoutable ce son, il est redoutable Un crevable menacé, un crevable bim Redoutable ce son, il est redoutable Un crevable menacé, un crevable And now uh, I want to, to tell you that when I when I came when I uh, did a tour with Starworks magazine in uh, in uh, Bangkok in uh, East Asia, yeah. I found this record mm -hmm. with this incredible remix from you. I see. Oh, oh okay. It's, Do you um, remember this? Yeah. Math side. Yes, math side. Yeah. It's ah, Yokin. Ah, wow. Yeah, okay, this is like a reggae tune. Reggae-ish. Yeah, reggae-ish. And you yes. did a dub remix. And I did a dub mix. Yeah, 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 yeah. How, how did this happen? How well, did you connect it with, uh, with Mafsai? I'll tell you, I'll tell you how. Um, it's because Mafsai works with a guy in England uh, called Chris Menace. Of course. 
Yeah, and um, they, Chris Menist plays and Mafsai manages a Molan band called Paradise Bangkok. And I mix their albums. Oh, yeah, okay. but not with some big stamp of Manasa. I just mix, nice mix. Okay. You know, just yeah. as a job, I'm, I mix their albums. Yeah. I think I mix three albums for them now, which is very nice. And it's and also I mix them at Glastonbury. Um, Fantastic. So I know Mafsai. So okay. we have a relationship. Lovely um, guy. So yeah, really nice guy. Um, and he. Um, yeah, he br he bring this tune to me. So you know, I want to do some mixes for the. Yeah. Yeah, and it's Fantastic. really nice tune. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah, and, and unusual because I think when I did the mix, he was there. Oh, okay. Which is unusual. Yeah. He was in the studio yeah, with you. Yeah, he was in the studio with okay. me. Okay, yeah. he's yeah. such a he's yeah. a really yeah. amazing, and he's moving things really big yeah. way yeah. in his days. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely connected yeah. us with all the right people. So I had to bring you this record. Yeah. And now. I never I never see this. You never saw that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wish I had a, I, I had one for you, but I don't. <laughs> no, I, I will get one. I don't, maybe I have it. Okay. Maybe I don't you have it. I do, I do actually. Because I posted it to you, but you didn't react on the. Uh, oh, did I miss on it? Oh, okay, you, okay. you missed it. Yeah, but yeah. It, it yeah. is a, a, a great, uh, yeah, a great yeah, record. Yeah, it's a nice record. Yeah. So now, uh, you know, talking about records, mm -hmm. I wanted to speak to you about Soul Revival. Soul Revivals in an amazing album that you have produced with David Hill. Yes. Yeah. And there's a, a big story, and the first thing that I wanted to speak about is the photo. Yeah. Because you told me the story yeah. about the photo yeah. Yeah. on the Grove and everything. Yeah. Can, can you can you tell us about? Yeah. That? So, uh, as many of you, the people watching this, will know, that Labra Grove in West London is the traditionally is where the West Indian people arriving in the 60s and the late 50s and the 60s, the people from Trinidad and Tobago, they went to Labra Grove. And the people from Jamaica, more, went to Brixton. Obviously there is some mixing, but generally speaking this is true and this is why the Notting Hill Carnival is in Labra Grove, is because it's a Trinidad thing. So. Drummy Zeb from Aswan, you can see he's quite clearly, he's Trinidad, he looks Trinidad, there's a, there's a different look. Um, so, um, in Labra Grove, right from the beginning of that West Indian immigration to London, there was a, there was a guy called Charlie Phillips, who's mixed race, um, who photographed life in Labra Grove huge archive of pictures and um, he, uh, Charlie Phillips' life is very up and down kind of thing but in recent years people rediscovered his archive and rescued some negatives from you know even dustings and things and wow. now he is recognized as one of the he's great. from the Windrush yeah, generation. Yeah absolutely yeah he's maybe like 80 now. Okay. And he is acknowledged as a big an, an important person in the cultural history. So what's happening in the picture? What do we see? So in the, I found that picture. I was looking through contact sheets and I found that one. And um, so what's happening is that it's my old friend Lepke from DBC, Dread Broadcasting. And DBC was the very first black pirate radio station in in the world in the world in, in London and in the world really yeah as a illegal radio station um, it was before all of the before pirate radio took off in London and became a wow. big thing wow. in the late 80s and 90s Lepke was there in the early 80s with DBC okay and Dennis Bubble LKG. yeah okay and so in that photo uh, Lepke is stringing up his sound and Carnival is about to start and then there's just the two policemen walking past and one of them is just looking at him and <laughs> it's just in a way the photograph tells the whole story of that that you know in this photograph is a peaceful moment and everything is cool but there's always this tension between, the between the, yeah, and any moment the vibe can change. Yeah. And then, in obviously, in 1976, there was a big problems at Notting Hill Carnival, the the the, the Notting Hill riots, and, yeah. and um, of course. 
So always this kind of tension, and I think the photograph expresses that. It is a beautiful picture. Yeah, yeah. And the album is absolutely wondrous. I Thank love you. it. You know how much Thank you. I love it. Of course, there is uh, David Hill yeah. from Ballistic Brothers, yeah. owner of the New Phonic uh, yes, label right. that I yeah, absolutely yeah. love. Yeah, yeah. And so you guys produce this together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there is uh, actually a tune that you recorded four years ago mm. with Devon, right? No, much longer, much longer ago. Much longer ago. Yeah, no, I recorded. So, Devin uh, yeah, the Devon Russell track on the album is, is, a, is The Underground, um, uh, and it's a cover of a Curtis Mayfield tune. Um, and it's nice because all through his life, Devon loved to cover Curtis Mayfield songs, but he never did this one. Okay. And in my opinion, it's the best. There's one other that he's really good at, Darker Than Blue on High, yeah. High Times label, it's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. But this cover of Underground is really up there. It's, it is an amazing really, track. It's a great He's a vocal. mysterious guy. Well, he, I recorded this with Devon in 1997, and um, he died maybe two years later. Uh. Um, and rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, Devon. And everybody loved Devon. He was a, he was a really good guy, very gentle, and mm. um, just a real artist. You know, somebody who really really sing and understood about yeah. singing and projection. And you know, I mean, the range of performance, even on that one vocal, because you've got Dennis, you've got Devon's low voice, yes, and then you've got his falsetto, High pitch, yeah. yeah. And he can do harmonies, and he, and he gets the chat, the talking. You know, De Devon, many, Devon was a cosmic guy. And not many people know, but he had, I mean, he released a, a, a first album in uh, 1982, a first solo album, and that, that was produced uh, by, uh, by Studio One, by Sir Watson, yeah, yeah. which is an amazing yeah, yeah. album that's yeah. never been reissued. No, actually. no, it hasn't. had Ja Hold the Key. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so it's good to speak about him now. Yeah. We're it shows. Speak. It shows one interesting thing actually is that what it shows is that in that the classical roots period in Jamaica is the just the de the depth of talent, the amount of amazing talent of people who really knew what they're doing, really understood music, and the and it's something I've seen myself in in Jamaica as well is how. You know, one artist who maybe has a little more musical awareness will be in the studio helping another artist. And so I'm thinking I was in the studio once in, in, in Anchor in Gussie Clark with um, Jamali, who's a, who's a wicked singer and he really understands music. And there was a, a next singer doing a song for me and Jamali was just helping him all the way and he was going, no, 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 save that, save that, do that. That's the exit melody from the chorus. You know, and then you need this and then you need that. And, 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 and it was the same, I was, I was working with Luciano, same, same studio, Mikey General was in there, they were bouncing off. And that kind of musical cooperation is really special because, you know, it's one area where obviously the Jamaican music industry, there's, you know, intense competition. And yet, what you see in that situation is in the studio is not competition but cooperation. That's nice. Cooperation and, and help, assistance. And, that's, that's nice. And you know, and yeah. And even with Luciano, you know, at this great engineer, Marshall, who's, who he, he's, in, he's in the Gussie Clark video documentary. It's online, it's brilliant. Marshall is fantastic. And it was Marshall who, he kind of, um, you know, Lucy had the idea for the chorus, but Marshall said, no, make it go, make it go. Ready to go cross river Jordan. Ready to go cross river Jordan. And like the, and step up the melody, step up. And that was Marshall who did that. That's that's yeah. lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. Now on the yeah. album there is um, this soul revival album. There is Ken Booth, yeah. Ernest Wendling, yeah. Earl Sixteen. Yeah. I mean, it's an amazing yeah. album. Yeah. And I want to speak about my favorite Jamaican singer yeah. that is alive. You know who it is. Yeah. Earl 16. Right. You have produced two albums. You have yeah. done so much stuff with Earl 16. Yeah. So I want to go back and rewind. I know how sweet yeah. Earl 16. We forget that yeah. he's quite old because yeah. he was born in 1959 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but it, he, his voice is intact, you know, and he's so much energy, so much light. Yeah. So 
Let's rewind yeah. and explain me when you first met L16, how you met him, and you know, and the relationship you have with him. I met L16 in, I think, 1989. Um, he, Earl was the first um, Jamaican, like we would say, name brand. He was the first like big Jamaican artist who, 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 who I had worked with at that point. Um, and it was just a friend of a friend. He was, he was seeing a woman who was a, the friend of a friend. Um, a friend of the Equalizer, actually, Jeremy, who I was working with. And um, he, um, Earl had not been in London for that long. And he hadn't really had like a, a bit of a kind of some, you know, good thing happen yet. Okay. And so we recorded a tune called Natural Roots together. And that tune on the scene was like an instant hit. Wow. And, and, wow. and everybody was playing. It was, you know, we just we sold all the records quick. Just, and everybody was, you know, and people love that tune now. All the time, I still play it. And, um, and it was it was a great thing for Earl because after that, his name was a little more around, and then he met he met up with um, Left Fields, and he had a very big success with them. Then he met with Dread Zone, mm -hmm. had a very big success with things. Things started to happen for Earl, mm -hmm. but Earl did not say, "Okay, I'm not doing the reggae stuff anymore." You know, we carried or we continued working together, and. And we still work together now, often. Of course, he's like your brother, right? Yeah, we're really close, yeah. Um, and we just work really well together, you know. Yeah. He's, um, yeah, he's, uh, he knows that, he knows that he can come to, he can come to, to work with me with, you know, like maybe three quarters of an idea and we will work up the idea together and then we will arrange and, um, and, um, it's just a joy, you know. When you when you have that kind of communication with an artist, it's it's a real pleasure. Of course, yeah. yeah. Of course, yeah. And yeah, um, yeah so um, it's it's a great privilege to to have known and worked with Earl for thirty years. It's you know a wonderful thing. <laughs> you know, I, I, I know it's a special thing. You know? It is. He has the yeah. he's something really magical about. Yeah, and he has that he has that great thing in reggae music when where you could you know you know the guy's voice immediately. Mm. You know, an L16 tune comes along. Oh yeah, That's you know it. it's him. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. For yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. And uh, and actually, the the the, the 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 funny thing is that this up, your first one of the first yeah. record that you released solo was on Acid Jazz Records. That's right. Yeah. Actually, it was on Acid Jazz Records. But right. Originally, we had released it. Um, so you're talking about the album Dub the Millennium. Yes. And so originally we, we, we released that on our, our own label that we had with friends, but we did not do a CD. Oh. So we pressed it on Riz Records, was the name of the label, and okay. um, we sold a lot. And then Acid Jazz said, okay, we'll, we'll license the record on you from CD, but we also want to press some vinyl. Okay. And in the end, I think that record sold you know, a lot. A lot, yeah, like, of course, yeah. a lot. I don't even know. And now yeah. this new album is yeah. sold out, Soul yeah. Revivors. Yeah. You know, in France, you can't, you, can't, yeah. you can't buy it. it. So yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's, that's the thing that is amazing. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, uh, talking about that, uh, uh, I wanted to ask you, um, do you think vinyl is back in a big way? Because you know, in France, when you walk into the FNAC and to general stores, you see so much vinyl, more than ever. I think it, I think it is back, and I think it's a strong reaction, mm -hmm. and maybe sometimes subconscious, to the kind of ephemeral nature of, of, of the internet and digital, digital things, you know, is that you don't really have it. Okay. You know, you can back up and back up and have it on this drive and that drive. Okay. But you know, the, the, in the mainstream industry, the tendency is not even to own the music. The tendency is just to stream. You, know, you don't even own it at all. So the vinyl thing is all about physical, you know, I want to have something. Okay, so two last questions you know, because we're yeah, running out of time. Rush, yeah. uh, we have, you have the, tell me about Soul Garden. 
about the, the label in Root, Brighton? Roots Garden. Roots Garden, Roots Garden sorry. Yeah. Tell me about this label. So Roots Garden is a label that was started by John Jones and it was came from, he had the longest running reggae night in the world called okay. Roots Garden. Okay. Um, he wanted to start, he wanted to put out some tunes and he contacted me in 2004 and he said, I know you have, I know you have a Johnny Osborne tune that you, <laughs> you, you have not released. And that became the first Roots Garden release. And okay. similar with Earl, John is just a great character. He's perfectly suited to running a record label and we run the record label. He, he, he does the sort of bureaucracy, the admin, and I do most, not all, but most of the music. And it just works well. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. And now just before we finish, yeah. I want to speak about Fela. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is the first record yeah. ever yeah. Wow. released by Fela Kuti. Right. Uh, uh, called Fela, Fela, Fela. It's a reissue, but it's a very rare uh, album, obviously, you know. Yeah. And I wanted you to tell me do you remember the first time you heard Fela? No. Music? No, I don't. I don't, and I have to admit to you, Ness. Actually, I'm not. I don't know much about Fela Kuti, okay. actually, and Afrobeat in general. The one thing I do know that I will tell you a nice story is um, the the one guy who gets forgotten. But if you speak to Nigerian people, many of them will say is the number one guy who they loved. Nothing, nothing against Fela. But people love King Sunny a day. King Sunny a day, yeah. And he's a little bit more pop. Okay. And I remember that Brother Culture, the MC, whose father was Nigerian, had this wonderful cassette of, of the King Sunny a day album, Synchro System Movement. And it's oh, a wicked album. Yeah, it is, it is. And, it is. and um, so I copied it for Culture. I put it onto <laughs> CD for him. And okay. uh, okay. yeah, it was really and I So I learned something about African music then. And, and also, I work a lot with Soothsayers, who is an Afro, uh, Afrobeat yes. Yes. band. Yes. And, you know, I get it, I understand, but, you know, to be honest, it's, it, you know, it's just, I just, I just don't know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so to finish the interview, I'm yeah. going to give you, this is for you. This ah, is, uh, thank you. Kanaga, very first release right. uh, of Linval Thompson. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, oh, is this? Inch. Yeah, so... But remember, it's, I can't see it. That's all right. That's all right. It's uh, yeah. it's uh, it's the first release of the shop. Can oh, I go record, fantastic. my friend? So okay, I'm happy to, to give it to you. Can I go record? Big up every <laughs> time. Yay! This is Nick Manasa here for Ness Radio. I'm, I'm here with DJ Afro Ness. One love, and this is Nick Manasa, and I'm here for Musical Echoes. Talking to you live. Yes, bigger. Nice. Yeah. Yeah.